Let's go to our sailboat. My name is Karaka and I crossed the Indian Ocean. Welcome to the saloon. <laughs> so from where to where did we go? We started in Asia and Indonesia and went all the way to Mauritius. It's about 5,000 kilometers, more than 5,000, 5,222 to be exact. <laughs> I will show you around a little bit. Stove, very important. Here, rocking space and the sink where we clean our plates and all these things. Uh, we have two different kind of water systems. One is salt water and one is sweet water. Yeah, a mechanical pump. Salt water from outside right into the boat. So we can use as much water as we want since we are on an ocean. There is a lot of salt water, so no problem. But for uh, cooking, uh, you don't want to use salt water all the time. It's kind of salty, right? So you use uh, sweet water. And we have sweet water in our tank. And we have an electric, electric pump for that, which is the other button sitting down there. And it comes out and when the pump does not work we just get the water right out of the tank with the water bottle and here is the water tank so i get my water bottle inside the water tank and here's my water the disadvantage about that is that uh, well there is no filter so you can have some quite dirty water how did we get the water on the boat well there's uh if you're in a marina you can have just a hose and you plug it in. If you don't have a marina, well, then it's a different story. Then you need to get the water somehow else on the boat. For example, with buckets. And that's what we actually did. And we sent Simon, our crew member, uh, on shore to get all the water, to fill it into the buckets, in the blue buckets, and then to bring it back on Caracas. Once uh, back on the boat, we had an electric pump and we pumped it from the buckets into our tanks inside Kanaka. We actually did that uh, quite a lot of times, four times, uh, until we had all the water. It was more than one ton of sweet water. Food, food, very important. Let's go around the corner and I will show you uh, where we store our, our food supply. So uh, this is where our food is stored. Spices, pasta, sugar, uh, chocolate of course as well, eggs, you know, all these kind of things. And vegetables, you have to be very careful on a sailboat uh, because we don't have a fridge here. So uh, they get a bed quite fast. Welcome to the toilet. You sit down and you hold yourself when there's a big swell because otherwise you get smashed around. And it works with a mechanical pump on my left side here. And you pump the water out into the ocean again. This also only works here with salt water, so uh, we don't waste our precious uh, sweet water. And now we are uh, in my uh, cabin where I slept and fell off as well because when it was very stormy, just fell off. So what we also have here is the IRS, the GPS, this is this machine here. And it's a very important machine because it tells us our position, where exactly where we are also our speed and it shows us most other ships around. So if we're on a collision course with another ship, it gives us a warning signal of an alarm. Beep, 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 you're about to crash into another boat. So better change your course. And that's uh, why we use this system here. And I will show you now our solar panels. Okay, at this point the wind got so strong that you cannot hear anything, so I need to talk over it while editing. But that's not a problem at all, I just used this footage from the drone I shot in Indonesia. You can see here in the back uh, the, the girls, Emma, Melanie and Tanya. And when you go to the front of the boat, and there's blue buckets there. And we use the blue buckets to clean ourselves. Every sailboat has a mast, this one has even two, this is where you raise the sail and you put it down again. So it doesn't matter how the conditions are, 
you have to go to the mast very very often and sometimes we had to secure ourselves with harnesses because uh, the waves were so big and so dangerous. So what is happening right now, here is Simon and Tom and they are taking a reef. That means they are lowering the sail a little bit but not all the way. Because the wind was so strong we still needed the wind but not so much wind. That, that's why we made the sail smaller. Tom is our captain by the way. Hi, my name is Tom, I'm the captain of Caraca. Caraca is a share coast boat that we've uh, been sailing for 15 years now and uh, we've been around the world once. Uh, for this trip, which was almost 3,000 miles across the southern Indian Ocean, very rough conditions, long way, you can't get off in the middle of nowhere. At the middle we were, I think, uh, 1,500 uh, kilometers from the sh closest land, which means we are very middle of nowhere, no shipping. And so there I tried to select people I knew I could depend on. And this was Emma, Simon, Tanya, Melanie and me of course, Peter. Emma and I were cooking a lot uh, together because for us it was social. For two hours we would stay together, talk about what we were able to cook, what we are going to do and then yeah, and until we enjoy the, la the dish, so um, it was, I would say, the main activity during the day. The situation was tough because you have to manage the swell, right? And you have to hold everything together. So let's say you want to make a sauce and you make pasta at the same time. You have to hold your pasta and to be able to make a sauce together. Otherwise, everything will fall on the floor and you have to start again. We were all very grateful that Emma and Melanie were cooking so good and it was really really hard conditions and I love pumpkin. It's one peach and for the ananas it's uh, one two thirds. Let me introduce you to the cat. She had quite a hard time with the big waves as well but she also managed like we did. Sometimes we used her for cuddling and sometimes for fighting. So it's evening and it's ramen party time. It's quite easy. You take ramen, these noodles, uh, add some hot water. Sam is making it right now. He doesn't want to get filmed, so. Then we add it uh, into the bowl. There's powder inside and some sauce or something like that. And we add hot water and you wait five minutes. Nobody does that, but you wait five minutes. And if you're very uh, special, we did that in the, in the beginning. Uh, you add some eggs to it. Now we don't have any eggs left. But uh, it gives a uh, very special, very, uh, how do you say, eggy flavor. Perfect. Very, very fresh as usual. This is our French captain cursing because he is fixing the battery during a big, big swell. When you're on an ocean in the middle of nowhere and something is breaking, you really need to fix it right now. Otherwise, it will be very, very dangerous later. So we almost lost our, our life raft. We did lose the table in the back and uh, the wind vane, our autopilot, broke in the first week. So yeah, I would say for me the hardest uh, part of the whole trip was the big waves, the swell. It does never stop, left and right, left and right, up and down. And you know, um, you cannot take a break of it, right? It's not like from 9 to 5, it's it's 24 hours, 7 days a week. And it is for, for 3 weeks in total and actually it was like 22 days. And we didn't know that in the beginning, right? So we were like... You cannot take a break out of that. We had two hours each uh, on, the, on the steering wheel to steer the boat towards Mauritius, always staying on course. Don't go too much to the south, you will end up in Antarctica. Don't go too much to the north, we will end up in India. We don't want it. We want to cross the Indian Ocean towards Mauritius. So we stayed uh, on course during our shifts. It was for two hours and then the next one took over. Actually it was two shifts, 
for two hours every day. Otherwise, it doesn't line up to 24 hours, right? For six people. What did we do the whole uh, days, the whole weeks on the boat? I read a lot. Actually, I, uh, I think I counted, I read 32 books since we left German in, like, in two months. So that's, that's one book every two days, more or less. And part of my responsibility is to be alert, to be able to deal with any situation at any time. Meaning that if I'm tired, I might not be able to do this. So I need to rest as much as I can. So every time I get a chance, I try to sleep. Oh, I was thinking about drawings, uh, about the life in general, uh, listening to podcasts, about people on the boat, if they feel well or not. Uh, you have a lot of time to think about. I was mainly sitting at the back when it was possible and thinking. Not thinking, but thinking. <laughs> about life, about friends, what I want to do, etc. What did I do? I was reading, I was uh, discussing some things about life, philosophy, and uh, meditating, of course, every day, doing my yoga practices, which was kind of difficult sometimes when it got really uh, stormy. I really enjoyed to just look out on the ocean and just see this big, vast uh, ocean water body. For three weeks doing nothing. Every day is the same. You look left, water. You look right, water. Behind you, water. In front of you, water. The people are the same. The boat is the same. And there is no possibility to escape. So, what did you do in the last three weeks? Probably a lot, right? And just imagine you now on the boat. The next three weeks, every day will be the same. And at one point, you might get tired of reading, you might get tired of listening to podcasts, you might get tired of talking to other people. So, you do nothing. And nowadays we call that you are bored. But imagine uh, you cannot escape that boredom. Nowadays, right, we go on Instagram, Facebook, or YouTube or whatever. Imagine you don't have that. What do you do? No distractions. And this is when you can learn a lot. This is when you can really learn a lot, especially about yourself. I really recommend it. I learned a lot. <laughs> thank you for joining me on this trip. And uh, also thank you for the other crew members. I learned a lot uh, from them. And also because I was stuck with them, I learned a lot because of them about me. <laughs> okay, see you for the next video. Bye. If you like this video, subscribe to this channel, hit the notification bell so you get a notification next time there's a video. Share it with someone who's about to go sailing, that would be fun, you know? The first thing I did when we finally arrived in Rodriguez. <laughs> I went to the shop to have cheese. <laughs>